live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Oh, welcome back here at AWS reInvent. Uh, day three of our coverage here on theCUBE. We've been here since Tuesday, bringing you all kinds of sites and insights uh, from the show floor here. Some 40 guests that we've had on this set alone they have a presence actually at four sets around here. There's a lot of content to capture, a lot of excitement in the air. And uh, I'm John, that's Rebecca, I don't have to tell you that, you know that. Uh, we're joined by uh, Ankit uh, Knovel, who's the Senior Director of Engineering at Kaibos Insights. Good to see you, Ankit. Thank you. And uh, Ajay Anand, who's the Vice President of Products and Marketing at Kaibos as well. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. We appreciate the time. Uh, it's good to be back with you. All right, so share a little bit, just for, for folks at home who are watching and may not be familiar with Kaibos. I doubt there are many. <laughs> but just in case, share with us a little bit and with them uh, your core mission. Yeah, what, so what Kaibos does is we deliver the capability of doing instant business intelligence uh, on data at massive scale, either on premises or on the cloud. So one of the big problems people have is when they're trying to connect from their BI tools to huge amounts of data, it takes a long time for the, for the data to come back into the tool. As they're dragging and dropping, they don't get that interactive response. So we solve that by building a BI consumption layer on top of the big data, and what that enables you to do is, you know, once we've pre-processed that data and built multi-dimensional cubes, then you can get that interactive response time, right? So the core technology is OLAP, you know, which has been around for a long time. Yep. But what we do is we make OLAP scale to huge amounts of data and really take advantage of the capabilities of the cloud or big clusters and on-premises environments and really scale out with the cloud. Can you give us some examples of, of who, you, who your customers are and, and the kinds of problems, the kind of specific problems you're solving for them? Sure, some of our customers have uh, spoken publicly about us, so I can you know, share what they said. Uh, so Walgreens spoke uh, about us at the, at the Tableau conference just a couple of weeks ago, and they're pro solving problems that they had never imagined they'd be able to solve before, dealing with you know, hundreds of billions of rows of data and getting instant responses, right? Uh, and these customers are building you know, multi-dimensional cubes at a scale that's never been done before. You know, 100 terabyte cubes. Uh, so Walgreens is an example of that. Uh, Verizon has spoken about us at other conferences as well. You know, Ankit, I mean, I'd like to, to know I mean, what your take is on, on uh, as, as we were just talking about the volume, right, that you're, that you're dealing with here, uh, like never before. How do you help your customers figure out what matters? what's important and what's not, because most, or I shouldn't say, much of what they generate really doesn't matter, and yet there are some valuable nuggets in there that they are still trying to extract and then analyze appropriately. So how do you help them with that job? Yeah, so you know what happens is, as organizations and enterprises keep getting more and more data, uh, they, they take it to a data lake. Now, you know, the data on the ground wasn't enough and now you have got the services like, you know, which, which, get, which, which helps you get the data from even space, you know, uh, Andy announced that you, know, you can get the data from satellite. So all this data, now once that data reaches a data lake, uh, the next challenge that comes to or in front of a business user is, you know, how do you really get the ROI out of it? Now when I say ROI, basically, you know, I'm talking about ROI of data and the ROI of data actually improves or comes only when, you know, the data goes in the hands of the business user. So that's where Kaios comes into picture because you know, once you have data and you want your business users to analyze it, it has to be super fast and that's what Kaios does, number one. And number two, you know, the business users want their data to see in a way that they want. You know? so, so basically, Kaios helps you to actually define a semantic layer or a business view on top of your data so that you know, business user actually sees the data the way they want. So those are the things they know that 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 Kaios provides and helps the business user to actually get the data out, uh, the insights out of the data. So th this week at AWS, you launched version five. Tell our viewers a little bit more about what version five entails, some of the some of the capacities and. Right. So so one big thing is you know the capability to do elastic OLAP in the cloud. So the OLAP capability, being able to really leverage uh, the infrastructure cost effectively, scale out to deal with peak loads and scale it down as you're building these multi-dimensional cubes. So really being able to deal with the infrastructure cost effectively and deal with 
you know, massive amounts of data as you're building these cubes. So you can, you can decide, I want to build a 100 terabyte cube and just spin up the right amount of infrastructure that you need to build that cube and then shrink it down, right? So that elastic capability both for cube building as, full, as well as querying, right? So if you, we've got, at Walgreens, they talk about dealing with hundreds and thousands of users, both internal and external, all connecting to this data using Tableau or some other BI tool and being able to deliver that instant response to them, right? So having that elastic capability uh, is what, you know, is the new capability we're... Uh, yeah, I, I, th I think the point is, you know, as Indy was talking in, her, in his yesterday's uh, keynote that if you could do it fast, then why not do it fast? I think that's where cloud comes into picture that, you know, with our Kaios 5 release, once you set up your Kaios, Kaios on the cloud, uh, it could actually use that scalability or the elasticity provided by cloud to its benefit and for the benefit of the customer. As the load increases, as the, the complexity increases, we could actually scale out and deliver the performance that we promised to deliver. And then once the, once the, you know, the, the load actually reduces, then we could again uh, reduce the resources that we are consuming and that's how we actually uh, reduce the cost that, that is borne by the customer. So essentially that is again you know, giving them uh, better ROI on the hardware that they are investing on. So how do you pump the brakes a little bit on the speed? I mean, in terms of making sure that you're in control. You know, because speed's one thing, right? Very important to have, but we need reliability, you need accuracy, you, uh, latency you know, is not as much of an issue. But, yeah. but, but how do you, right. so, I, I, pump the brakes might not be the right description, but how do you ensure that speed is not an inhibitor and it's actually a facilitator? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of enterprise capabilities that we have to provide. You know, dealing with the, you know, the resilience so that it's, it's always available to their business users. Dealing with concurrency as you, you know, really scale out the large numbers of users. Dealing with security, right? So as I mentioned at Walgreens, they've got external users as well as internal users all accessing the same cube. And they all need to see only what they're allowed to see, right? So we maintain that security right from the, from the user to the data and we keep track of who's allowed to see what and expose only that, right? So, so all of those capabilities are built into the product. You know, as, and as an engineer, I could actually say that, you know, again, I would take the quote from Werner today morning that, you know, hey, you really architected it well. So, you know, we architected the product right from the beginning to, to not only deliver the performance, but also to be scalable, deliver performance at scale, to be secure, and then, you know, to be reliable, fault tolerant, so those things are inherently built into the product, then being, you know, uh, a patch on top of the product. We're hearing so much at this conference that many enterprises have really had the aha moment, I need to go to the cloud, that, that the security, the governance, uh, those concerns are really fallen by the wayside. So, so what's next? I mean, now that we, that we have so many companies migrating, where do we go from here? Yeah, so I think you know, what we're seeing is a lot of companies are still in the process of migrating, right? So they've had on-premises infrastructures, now they're moving to hybrid cloud and then moving to you know, potentially everything in the cloud. So delivering a seamless experience to the business user is extremely important, right? So a business user shouldn't have to care whether the data is on-premises or in the hybrid cloud or in the cloud itself. They should get that same interactive response, the same you know, familiar user interface, and that's, that's what our you know, BI layer provides, right? By, by delivering that you know, consumption layer that sits the same way on premises as well as in the cloud, it's a completely seamless experience for the, for the user. And I think, you know, the performance at scale still remains a problem. The thing is, you know, how can you make it easy to use for the user? How can you make it smarter? So I think that's where we are going towards, you know, with our latest releases, Kaios uh, 5. We're bringing certain capabilities in the product so that uh, the user doesn't have to bother about, you know, how do you really create that, that semantic layer? The product is smart enough to tell them that you know, what should be included in it and what should be out of it. So smartness is one area which we are moving towards so that we can help the business user to get the performance at scale with a lot of ease of use. Now I assume you guys have been here for a day or two, correct? Yes. Right. You met with a lot of customers, I, I again would assume, right? Right. So what, what is your takeaway going to be from those direct conversations you've had here in terms of what you take back to Kaibos and, and maybe start putting into practice. I mean, what are you hearing about, like, this is my next roadblock, this is my next barrier, this is what I'm going to come to you to help me fix. Yeah, you know, so we, we heard Andy's talk this morning, or was it maybe uh, Werner? Uh, Yesterday, Werner right, this yeah, morning. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, so Werner's talk where they talk about 
you know, 95% of what goes into AWS comes from feedback from their customers. And that's true with us, you know, to a large extent, we learn from our customers as they deploy these, uh, uh, the, these cubes and their environments about what's important to them, you know, what are the critical areas that we need to overcome, really understanding their business use cases and making sure that we build that smartness into the product so we can see how does, what kind of intelligence are they looking to gather, what kind of you know, analysis are they looking to do, and then we use that to build the smartness into the cube so that the, the, the user doesn't need to figure this out himself. You know, so that's one of the new capabilities that we are providing and we're continuing to work on is to build more and more smartness into the product so it, it, it helps the user go where they want to go. And I think that as we go to cloud, specifically AWS, you know, how can we really use the services provided by the cloud and then how can we really provide a layer of abstraction on top of what is already there so that you know, it becomes really easy for the, for the user to use whatever we are providing. Right. Just, right. Yeah, just, yeah, and I don't want, I don't want to uh, convolute this with things that I don't need and time and effort. It's all about money at, at the end of the day, right? Save me money, save me time. Well, it, it, it's not just saving money, but really uh, the top line benefit, right? So expanding the business opportunity. So we've got a bank that's doing risk analysis as they look for new investments. It used to take them days to do that risk analysis before they could make a decision. Right. Now they can do it in seconds, right? So their ability to make a decision much faster and react to market conditions really opens the door for them for much greater business opportunity and revenue, right? right? So it's not just cost savings that's, that's driving this. It's, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity. You bet. Yeah, because, because you know, if the queries don't really come fast, let's say you as a person sitting and you, know, you fire a query and then it takes a lot of time and you go back and you have a cup of coffee and then come back, you know, your chain of thoughts is actually broken. So then you, know, you cannot explore from the data what otherwise you could if the queries could have actually come within seconds. Right, gentlemen, thank you for being Thanks here with us. I uh, hope the show's gone well for you. It sure does thank you. sound like it's been a success. And look forward to seeing you down the road. Great, thank you. good, to, thank good you. to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, back uh, with more in just a bit here on theCUBE. You're watching AWS reInvent.